Hello, I am Dorothy Dolphin, Black America Collective Club, and my presentation for this exhibition is for Alice Dunbar Nelson. Alice Dunbar Nelson was born July 19, 1875. She was an American poet, journalist, and political activist, among the first generation born free in the South after the Civil War. She was one of the prominent African American involved in artistic flourishing of the Harlem Renaissance. Her first husband was the poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar. After his death, she married physician Henry A. Callis, and lastly was married to Robert J. Nelson, a poet and civil rights activist. She achieved prominence as a poet, author of short stories, and drama newspaper columnist, activist for women's rights, and editor of two anthologies. From 1913 to 1914, she was co-editor and writer for the AME Review, an influential church publication produced by the African and Methodist Episcopal Church. She co-edited the Wilmington Advocate, a progressive black newspaper. She also published the Dunbar Speaker and Entertainer, a literary anthology for a black audience. Alice Dunbar Nelson supported America's involvement in World War I. She saw the war as a means to ending racial violence in America. She organized events to encourage other African Americans to support the war. She referenced the war in a number of her works. In her 1918 poem, I Sit and Sew, Nelson writes from the perspective of a woman who feels suppressed from engaging directly with the war's effort. Because she was not able to enlist in the war herself, Nelson wrote propagandist pieces, As My Eyes Have Seen, a play that encouraged African American men to enlist in the Army. These works displayed Nelson's belief that racial equality could be achieved through military service and sacrificing oneself to their, to their nation. Most of Dunbar Nelson's writing was about the color line, both white and black color lines. In an autobiographical piece, Brass Ankle Speaks, she discussed the difficulties she faced growing up mixed race in Louisiana. She recalled the isolations and the sensation of not belonging to or being accepted by either race. As a child, she said she was called half-white nigger, and while adults were not as vicious with their name calling, they were also not accepting of her. Both black and white individuals rejected her for being too white. White co-workers did not think she was racial enough, and black co-workers did not think she was dark enough to work with her own people. She wrote that being multiracial was hard because the yellow niggers, the brass ankle, must bear the hatred of their own and prejudice of the white race. Much of Dunbar Nelson's writing was rejected because she wrote about the color line, oppression, and themes of racism. Few mainstream publications would publish her writings because it was not marketable. She was able to publish her writings, however, when the theme of racism and oppressions were more subtle. Alice moved to Wilmington, Delaware, and taught at Howard High School for more than a decade. During this period, she also taught summer sessions at State College for Colored Students, which is now Delaware State University, and at the Hampton Institute. In 1907, she took a leave of absence from the Wilmington teaching position and enrolled at Cornell University. Returning to Wilmington in 1908. In 1910, she married Henry A. Callis, a prominent physician and professor at Howard University, but this marriage ended in divorce. In 1916, she married the poet and civil rights activist Robert J. Nelson. She worked with him to publish the play Masterpieces of Negro Experiences, which was only shown once at Howard High School in Wilmington. She joined him in becoming active in local and regional politics. They stayed together for the rest of their lives. During this time, she also had intimate relationships with women, including Howard High School principal Edwina Crost and the activist Faye Jackson Robinson. In 1930, Nelson traveled throughout the country, lecturing, covering thousands of miles, and presenting at 37 educational institutions. 
Nelson also spoke at YWCA's, YMCA's, and churches. Her achievements were documented by Friends Service Committee newsletter. She moved from Delaware to Philadelphia in 1932 when her husband joined the Pennsylvania Athletic Commission. During this time of health decline, she died from a heart ailment on September 18, 1935, at the age of 60. She was cremated in Philadelphia. She was made an honorary member of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Her papers were collected by the University of Delaware. Her diary, published in 1984, detailed her life during the years 1921 and 1926 to 1931 and provided useful insight into the lives of black women during this time. It summaries her position in an era during which law and custom limited access, expectations, and opportunity for black women.